When you hear the name Ghetto Boys, who do you think of? Most listeners think of Scarface, Willie D, and Bushwick Bill. But the hardcore fans know that this isn't the original lineup, but they sure is the most successful. Because the original lineup consisted of three MCs named Jukebox, Raheem, and K-9, a.k.a. Sir Rapalat. They don't get enough recognition for the groundwork they laid for the Ghetto Boys brand and Rapper Light Records as a whole. Now, throughout the video, I will make mention of Scarface and Willie D, but the main focus of this video will be based on the original lineup. Now, join me as we discuss the foundation the original Ghetto Boys laid for Rapper Light Records and Southern Music. Back in the mid-80s, the Houston rap scene was making waves mostly for the popular rap battles in the schoolyards and at a popular nightclub on the north side of Houston called the Rhinestone Wrangler. One of the regular participants in these battles was an MC named Keith Rogers, who went by the stage name Jukebox. While Jukebox was out making a name for himself, it was through these rap battles he met three other MCs named Kid Fresh, Rapping Lee and Diamond T, and together they formed a group called the Awesome Three and Jukebox. The Awesome Three and Jukebox started doing small shows, mostly at local colleges. And around this time, another MC had just moved to Houston from Trenton, New Jersey, named Oscar Series, who went by the name Raheem. He met the Awesome Three and Jukebox through the rap battle scene, and they instantly clicked. Later on, Kid Fresh and Diamond T left, so the group reorganized with Jukebox, Raheem, Rappin' Lee, and the female MC named Lady C, and the name of the new lineup was the Hard Rock Connection. After the Hard Rock Connection was formed, they had met a guy named Byron McDonald, who said he knew a guy who had money who they could talk to, and the guy name was James Smith. Now. Before the initial meet took place, Rapping Lee loved to pursue other interests and Lady C moved out to the East Coast and became a rap duo with another female MC who was going to become the Lady of Rage. So now it was just Jukebox and Raheem left and they decided to become a rap duo and called themselves the Hip Hop Vigilantes. Eventually, Jukebox and Raheem would meet James Smith and his stepbrother Thelton Pope, a.k.a. K-9, who was another fierce battle rapper out there making a name for himself. At first, Jay wasn't too particular about investing in the music business because he had wanted to invest in the K-9, but K-9 wasn't consistent enough. Raheem went on record saying some days K-9 would be 100% into it and some days he just didn't want to do it. So Jay was uncertain about bagging the hip hop vigilantes. So Jukebox, knowing an opportunity when he see one, vigorously went out to Jay to convince him to be their financial backer. And after a strong convincing and hearing Jukebox and Raheem rapping, Jay decided to give them a chance, telling them as long as they stayed in school, he'll back them and he'll put them on. Although Raheem and Jukebox was already a duo, Jay teamed them up with K-9 and all they needed to do was come up with a new name for the group on our podcast Graffiti Talk Radio Raheem quoted we were sitting at the round table and Jay wanted to come up with a name for the group and we wasn't going to name it Hip Hop Vigilantes because that was me and Box and we wanted to keep that name for us so K-9 jokingly said fuck it let's call it Ghetto Boys I was against it because we already had the Fat Boys and the Beastie Boys. We didn't need another boys group. But Jay said, hmm, Ghetto Boys. I like that. Then Jay said, what are we going to name the label? And once again, K-9 jokingly said, fuck it. Name it out to me. Call it Rap A Lot Records. And once again, Jay said, hmm, Rap A Lot Records. I like that too. And just like that. The Ghetto Boys and Rap-A-Lot Records was born. 
Collectively, all three members of the group were dope MCs, but individually, Jukebox was the businessman, K9 was the playboy, and Raheem was the live wire. A few weeks had passed since the formation of the Ghetto Boys and Jay had booked some studio time. They were getting prepared to record their first single, Car Freaks. Now, at first, it was supposed to just be Jukebox and K9. Raheem was going to do a solo song called It's My Record. He had been paging Jukebox back to back all day trying to get a hold to him, but he couldn't. So Raheem went into the studio and when he got there, K9 was already laying his vocals. Jukebox still hadn't made it, so Raheem had to go into the booth and take up the slack. He used a verse from a song he had wrote called It's My Mercedes and implemented it into the song. And eventually Jukebox came and they finished it. The song was finished, and Jay had let some people hear it, but when it was released, it gained little attention. But it didn't deter the ghetto boys because they just wanted to get their name out there. After Car Freaks was released, the group took another turn. K9 had gotten in trouble and had to go to jail, and Raheem left the group to concentrate on his solo career, leaving Jukebox as the only member. Around this time, a DJ from Trenton, New Jersey, named Collins Laceth, aka DJ Ready Red, had come to Houston to handle some personal business for his sister. While he was there, he was checking out the music scene and heard about a DJ competition called Battle of the DJs at the Rhinestone Wrangler. He entered the competition and that's where he met Jukebox, Lil J, and NC Trahan. They automatically clicked and they liked Ready Red's style of producing and they wanted him to join the group but Red was already part of another group called Del 4 and didn't want to leave but after giving this some consideration Red Red jumped on board his first moniker was the Grand Wizard but he dropped the moniker for two reasons one there was a wrestling manager in the WWF who went by the same name and wore a turban to the ring number two he idolized another DJ who went by DJ Grand Wizard Theodore. So out of respect for Theodore, Red changed his moniker from the Grand Wizard to the Musical Enforcer. While Jay was looking to reform the Ghetto Boys, Red Red recommended another battle rapper he knew from back home in Trenton. His name was Prince Johnny C. Red played a demo tape of Johnny C for Jay, and Jay loved it, and so he and Red sent for Johnny C to come on down to Houston. So now the new Ghetto Boy lineup featured Jukebox, DJ Ready Red, and Prince Johnny C. And the first order of operation for this new unit was they put out a new massive single title, You Ain't Nothing. After the single was released, a dwarf breakdowns and out of Bushwick, Brooklyn, named Richard Shaw, who was at the time going by the stage name Little Billy, had come to Houston for some personal business and got entrenched in the music scene. A DJ by the name of Lionel Mac saw Bill breakdancing. Mac was so impressed he told Reddy Red about him. He made the introduction. Red brought Bill in, making him the fourth member of the new Ghetto Boys. After Bill joined the group, they dropped another Maxi single title, Be Down. The Ghetto Boys was coming into their own. They performed at the Jack the Rapper Music Showcase and impressed other acts like Run DMC and CEO Russell Simmons. Around this time, Lil J was doing some business with Michael Harris, a.k.a. Harry O, who was known for making moves in the streets and was gaining a reputation in the entertainment industry. Harry O took a liking to the Ghetto Boys, so he was able to utilize his connections to get them booked with the Fat Boys on the Wipeout Tour. The 1987 Wipeout Tour was another stepping stone for the Ghetto Boys because this was their first time performing and experiencing the industry outside of Houston, performing on the East Coast and the West Coast. Realizing how lucrative the music industry was, it gave them the ideas on how to improve their craft and expand their horizons. After the Wipeout Tour ended, the Ghetto Boys started production for their first full-length album titled Making Trouble. 
This is where the issue started. Jukebox and Raheem both expressed how frustrated they were during the production phase because they didn't have creative control. And although Raheem was no longer in the group, he and Jukebox had written most of the songs before Raheem left. And Johnny C had to perform Raheem parts. Part of the problem was they sounded too much like the Fat Boys and Run DMC. Raheem stated on our show, Box and Johnny C didn't rap like that. I didn't rap like that. That's what Jay wanted us to write. That's how Jay wanted us to rap. And I hated it. As an MC, I need time for the listener to get involved in what I'm saying. I can't do that with one line. Jay had me coming in on one line and Box coming in on the next line and I'm coming back on the next line and I told Box that's not how we rock. But the Box credit, he had me to stick with it because he was more business minded than I was. And Drew Box stated after the Wipeout tour, Jay thought about the money the Fat Boys was making and saw what Run DMC was doing and he wanted to emulate those styles. Making Trouble is a good album, but it could have been better had we rapped the way we wanted to rap. DJ Ready Red had written Why Do We Live This Way and Johnny C had written the original version of Assassins which was later remade by Will Face and Bill on the Ghetto Boys self-titled album. And it was on this album where DJ Ready Red started a trend because he was the first producer to take samples from the movie Scarface and put it on record. Ready Red was ahead of his time for his production goals and it was the first rap album released in Houston. Unfortunately, the album received negative reviews and it's the least mentioned album of the All The Ghetto Boys releases. But regardless of the little attention they got, this is the foundation and this is where it all started. Around this time, Raheem just finished his solo album, The Vigilante, and Jay was searching for a distribution deal for the Ghetto Boys. Cliff Blige knew some people at AM. So, when he went to a and to present the Ghetto Boys Making Trouble album, the executives turned it down, saying they didn't want to deal with it because it was too rough. So, refusing to take no for an answer, it just so happened Cliff had Raheem's album, and he played it for the executives, and they were more responsive to that one. So, a and decided to distribute Raheem's Vigilante album. Right after the deal went through, the issue started, because for one, a and was an R&B label, so they weren't too familiar with rap music. It was a challenge for a and and rap a to get on the same page. rap wanted to put out street rap music, but a and wanted to promote squeaky clean rap music. Plus, rap a and and m were squawking over who was going to have the majority of control over the Vangelanta album and how they was going to split the money. So because of all this inner fighting, the Vigilante album didn't sell as good as it could have. And Jay really wanted to get the Ghetto Boys a distribution deal. So a and said if the Ghetto Boys want a deal, they have to do a clean album. And another part of the deal was Jay had to have four eggs. He already had Raheem and the Ghetto Boys. The other two eggs he attained was Reddy Red's first group, Del Four and another upcoming group out of Houston called Raw Flush. But the deal with AM will go from bad to worse. So stay tuned for part two with the story of the original Ghetto Boys. <laughs> 